Okay, it's piercing I've heard uh, pronounced two ways. Sheman or Shaman. Uh, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, and you will correct me in the comments. But what uh, this is going to be a very uh, detailed uh, video for those that are thinking about getting this piercing done. We're going to cover the pros and cons, what it'll take to heal it, jewelry, living with the piercing, um, what you should consider before getting it done, and what you should look for and know. Coming up next on... Pros and Cons by Piercer, Season 2, Episode Number 77. For those who are new to the channel, welcome to the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Hope you find them helpful and useful, but you may not know who I am. My name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. The piercing we're talking about today is an ear piercing done in the upper ear. Um, it is done, you know, the ridge that we usually have uh, rook piercings on and faux rooks. It's done on that ridge kind of a little bit more centered. Um, there's a lot of things behind this piercing, and I actually got a terrible review on uh, Google for uh, being condescending, supposedly, about this piercing. Uh, there's a lot of claims that it's going to do things like reduce your anxiety and uh, calm you and reduce stress and uh, boost immunity and relieve migraines and center the body and all this. All of this is based on Chinese me medicine and acupuncture. So uh, if you are thinking about getting this piercing for health reasons, I would advise you this. Number one. Your piercer is not a acupuncturist nor a trained and professional uh, practitioner of Chinese medicine. They're going to position that piercing where your anatomy dictates it and where it's going to heal best and look best if they know what they're doing. Um, any effect this may have, for most of the research that's been going on over the last couple decades, um, especially after the popularity of the date piercing curing migraines, is that uh, it may have a short-term effect, but the reality is is that unless you're stimulating that nerve all the time, uh, it doesn't really affect it. So the piercing will eventually kind of uh, not stimulate the nerve, at least that's the theory, and maybe uh, it goes away. Um, here's what I tell people. Um, I really don't think that any piercer should ever claim that a piercing can help you with a health issue. It is borderline quackery. Um, do your research, and I would avoid people that tell you or make claims like that. Uh, if it helps or if it's going to be a good, there's going to be a placebo effect, which is possible, um, go ahead and do it. You know, what? what is it going to hurt? Plus, it's a really cool piercing, and it's a nice place to start with an ear project. Now, let's talk about the history of this piercing. Um, it is a completely modern piercing. I'm sure that it was done probably at some point in human history, but it's not documented as such. Uh, there's no ties to any type of indigenous uh, First Nation, et cetera, uh, uh, tribes or, or uh, cultures. Uh, it is basically something we've came up with recently. And the piercing, of course, is named after the pressure point of the same name, um, uh, the, uh, translation from Chinese into English, as I understand it, is the meaning is heavenly gate. Um, it's the gate to heaven, I guess, or maybe is it a gate to heaven or is it a heavenly gate? Really nice gate. I don't know. Enough about that. Let's move on to the pros. The, the things that make you go, Hey, this may not be a bad idea for me to have in my life. Starting with number one, uh, most ear piercings are very socially acceptable. Um, it is not something that you're going to need to be concerned about your professional life and otherwise. Sporting activities and et cetera may be an issue or organized sports or um, other activities, but for the most part, this is not something that's going to keep you from getting a job or is going to affect how people perceive you. Number two, there is a large variety of jewelry out there. Very incredible pieces that would look fantastic in this location. So it's a piercing that can like be a showpiece, center piece 
uh, for an ear project. And it's kind of positioned on the ear where it, there's a lot of room to work with. Number four, this piercing has a long history of healing. Uh, it is not a piercing that's experimental or is going to not heal. It is something that more than likely will heal. And the last one, number five, most people have the uh, correct anatomy for this piercing. Uh, there might be some situations with how that ear folds at the top that may keep you from getting it done or may move the position. But for the most part, uh, most people have the area where this piercing can be done. Now the cons, the disadvantages, the things that make you go, uh, no, uh-uh. Number one, can be very difficult to isolate. It is part of the ear. Uh, sleeping can be an issue. Um, wearing helmets, hats, glasses, etc. over the ear headphones. A lot of things come in contact with that part of the ear, and it can be a difficult piercing to isolate during the healing process and afterwards. Number two, it's kind of already covered this, but it may come in contact with glasses. Um, if you wear glasses on a regular basis, where this piercing is positioned um, with different styles of glasses and how your ear is shaped, there may be contact or you may constantly be snagging that piercing, uh, the jewelry on your glasses. So it is uh, one of those things that needs to be uh, addressed. Number three, these piercings are notorious, like all cartilage piercings, of closing pretty rapidly. Um, they do take a long time to heal, for the most part, six months to a year in some cases. Um, and they take just as uh, they take three times as long to season to the point where leaving the jewelry out even for a couple hours may not be an issue. And the last one, number five, these piercings are extremely sensitive to trauma. Even after they've healed, um, causing trauma to the area can cause these piercings to flare up and suddenly be an issue. Now let's move on to preparing for the piercing and what you should know in advance. First one is if you are employed or uh, your employer has a dress code or you're involved in any type of organized sports or other activities where there is a dress code, you need to consult whoever's in charge and make sure that this piercing is not going to go against that and be an issue. Um, it is commonly, the most people get away with this one because they can hide it under hair, but still at the same time, it's usually best to check ahead so there's no new surprises or you don't have to abandon a fresh piercing that you really love. The next thing is choosing your piercer. Find somebody that's experienced, professional, informative, as in willing to educate you and makes you feel comfortable. Um, uh, offers a consultation in advance that covers uh, aftercare risks, uh, placement, anatomy, etc. Your piercing uh, should have a very good knowledge of your anatomy or anatomy in general and be able to evaluate it very quickly. That piercer should stock jewelry that is biocompatible, which uh, most commonly is going to be a certified implant grade titanium. Um, it's probably your best option um, with this one, but I'll go a little further into what my jewelry suggestions are a little bit later. This piercing will demand isolation, so plan ahead, uh, buy the pillows, figure it out so that you're not sleeping on the piercing. Also, uh, keep in mind that you may need to have to, you may have to abstain from certain activities until the piercing is healed. Um, do plan ahead with this so it isn't such a drastic uh, change in your lifestyle and sleeping patterns, and et cetera. Uh, it's not a bad idea to like buy a uh, one of those U-shaped travel pillows and then sleep with your ear in the center of it. Buy those ahead of time, kind of get used to sleeping that way. Or getting used to sleeping on the opposite side of the piercing. You're going to have to practice some cross-contamination prevention. Uh, know this in advance. If there are certain things in your life that may be affected by this, uh, that's one of the reasons why it's always great to have a consultation beforehand. I'm going to cover uh, uh, cross-contamination prevention a little later on when we get into healing. The next thing to consider is does your piercer provide aftercare product um, or is it something you have to buy elsewhere? In this case, sterile saline spray. Um, and also, do they offer verbal aftercare instructions? Do they cover the basics before you leave? And this is important because it allows you that time to ask your piercer questions about things that you're a little shaky on. Um, the other thing is, do they give you written instructions? Do they give you the jewelry, size, type, etc.? Um, 
you know, do they inform you or do they just give you a QR code, go scan this, you'll be okay, see you later, pay the lady on the way out. The last one to consider is this piercing may take up to a year or more to heal. Be prepared for that. This is not, this is a bit of a commitment and you need to understand that from the beginning. Now let's talk about the piercing experience itself. Most people, as far as pain level, say this is between a one or a two and a six. Everybody has a little different experience uh, based on your experience with pain and how you deal with it. Uh, common reactions or common things that will happen is you uh, sharp pain at first and then maybe a throbbing and aching afterwards, usually a lot of heat where it feels like the area is very warm. Um, that will fade usually within minutes after the piercing is done. And the and first thing we do is we uh, do a consultation that should cover wrists, um, cover jewelry selection, anatomy evaluation, um, aftercare instructions, and all that fun stuff. Basically giving you enough educated information um, to do for us to do the piercing correctly, but also for you to take care of the piercing and know what you're getting yourself into. Next, we set up and uh, set up all of our tools and equipment, um, disinfect the area, mark it, have you take a look at it, see if it's where you pictured it. Um, if you do wear glasses at this point in time, I would suggest you try it on, try them on to make sure that in the back there is not going to be any contact and that there's enough room in there uh, for that longer post that you're going to have initially and also uh, that you're not going to have problems with it. Uh, if you can't see it really clearly, you may want to ask uh, a friend if you brought one with you or even the piercer to take a photo. Uh, we can't see the side of our head very well. Uh, it's just the way life is. I like to do it in a reclined position. Um, basically, uh, if you're really nervous, I'll have you do a breathing exercise. Otherwise, I just inject a needle in and through, um, push the, the needle out with a guide pin, hook the jewelry onto the guide pin, push it back through, put the top on, stop any bleeding that may occur. These uh, don't always bleed a lot or hardly bleed at all, especially if your piercer takes the time to candle the area and make sure there's no blood vessels in direct uh, that we're gonna in the path of the needle. Usually afterwards, there's going to be a little bit of slight to moderate bleeding. Um, like I said earlier, throbbing and aching is not uncommon or a lot of heat that fades usually after eh, sometimes five, 10 minutes. Um, then it becomes tender to the touch. If you bump it, you're going to, you're going to know it. You're going to know it. If you catch the jelly, you're going to know it. It's going to be training you to keep things away from it and isolate that piercing. That's why your body does that thing that it does where it hurts to do that. Now, Jewelry to start out with will be loose uh, and longer than needed, and this is to allow for the swelling. The worst case scenario that I, at least I've experienced with a cartilage piercing is having jewelry in that's too short and the body uh, swells beyond the length of the jewelry, and you create this perfect storm where uh, the jewelry is too short because it's swelling. The swe it's swelling because the jewelry is too short, and the only thing that you can do to correct it is basically put a longer post in. So we tend to kind of sometimes go a little bit overboard on the length of the jewelry, and this is why it needs to be downsized later on, and we'll get to that too. Healing. Average healing time in this, uh, best case scenario, I've had some people that have healed them out in about three months. They were extremely healthy and young and all that stuff. Um, but it's more realistic, maybe to 6 to 12 months is probably a more realistic thing. Uh, you want to clean twice daily using a sterile saline spray. Personally, I like uh, Neomed's piercing aftercare. comes out in a fine mist, very easy to use. You just spray it on both sides, leave it alone. Um, if you are, if you can't find that, which is not uncommon, there are different brands and different types on the market. The main thing you want to look for is that it is in a metal can. It is pressurized. It says sterile on the packaging. And when you turn it over and look on the back, uh, the only ingredients you see there are water and sodium chloride, nothing else, no preservatives, no additives, etc. If it has any of those additives, not what you want. The other thing I suggest doing is at the end of your shower, pull your hair and everything out of the way and let the water kind of flow over that area for about 30 seconds. What we're doing with these two things is we're removing that hardened discharge that collects and hardens on the jewelry. The reason why we want it off there is when the jewelry shifts or moves, which can happen just with normal movement, um, it can agitate the piercing. It also can be very uncomfortable to feel like almost like they're ripping a scab off every time that happens. Um... If you feel like you have an obsessive amount of discharge or just isn't coming off, see your piercer, have them take a look at it, and have them clean it for you, um, and maybe advise you on some other options of cleaning. Um, if there's an issue, we need to address it as soon as possible. 
uh, if there isn't an issue and you, you may just need to apply more saline or what have you, uh, the biggest thing is don't run to the medicine cabinet, start pulling out things tipped in cotton or sharp points or what some stranger on the internet suggested and start digging around to get the discharge off. You're going to do damage. To, uh, you're going to cause problems. You're going to possibly scratch the jewelry, which can lead to another host of problems. Uh, when in doubt, see your piercer. If you haven't noticed already, swelling is an issue with this particular piercing. Now, how do you reduce swelling? A couple things you can do. First and foremost, avoid contact with the area. Um, the more you isolate the piercing, the less trauma happens to the piercing itself or movement of the jewelry, the less light or the less swelling you're going to see. Swelling is usually your body, your body reacting to that trauma. It also is going to reduce your likelihood of having bumps and other problems. The other thing is if you can sleep for that first week or so with your head elevated above your heart will help to reduce the blood flow to the area and thus reduce the swelling. Um, I have had some clients where they've used uh, ice. It's uh, helpful to a degree. Um, what I suggest doing is taking crushed ice in a Ziploc bag, wrapping it with a clean paper towel, and then gently laying against it. If it hurts to lay it against it, don't do it. The other thing or the last thing is you can take over-the-counter anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Tylenol, etc. However, I am not a physician, neither is your piercer. Um, we can't suggest these things to you because we, uh, we're not medical professionals and we don't know your medical history. If in doubt, contact your doctor, but if you've never had issues with these medications in the past, it shouldn't be an issue. Now, swelling can last anywhere from three to five days, sometimes longer, just so you know. Um, you need to practice cross-contamination prevention. This is mostly common sense stuff. Wash your hands free handle it. No oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on your around the piercing until it heals. Keep your environment clean. That means clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with this piercing needs to be cleaned on a regular basis. Keep pets away from it. Do not let pets sleep in the bed with you. Um, especially smaller animals like to sleep up on the pillow and steal your breath and your soul while you're sleeping. Uh, what we're concerned about is your uh, pet transferring from its fur by uh, pathogens, microorganisms, fungi, etc., and then that transferring into the piercing. Um, and then you have an infection. Fun. Uh, so keep the pets away from the area. Also, don't let them lick it. Ooh. Avoid contact with unclean objects. Culprits with this are going to be things like telephones, over-the-ear headphones, hats, helmets, glasses, sunglasses. Uh, anything that's going to come in contact with the area should probably be avoided, especially if it's very constrictive, like a helmet or uh, earmuffs or really tight over-the-ear headphones, you know, cans. Uh, the other thing is make sure that your hair is dry before it comes in contact with the piercing. Um, wear it up in a fun bun or one of those swami towels. I, your wet hair is more likely to cause not only moisture issues with the piercing, which can lead to other problems, but also can have a little bit more of an impact as far as uh, contaminating it, contaminating the piercing with microorganisms. Do not spin, rotate, move, play with the piercing. Touch it over and over again to see how much it hurts. All of these things are going to either lead to infection or cause enough trauma that you're going to have problems. Leave the piercing alone. There's no reason to have any contact with it at all while it is healing. For the first three to five days, it is normal to see redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness of touch, inflammation, in swell or swelling. Uh, if that occurs during that period of time, it's probably somewhat normal. If it occurs months later, not probably normal. See your piercer. Jewelry. Let's talk about jewelry. I, the first thing and foremost, what I suggest with this is a flat back labre stud, um, titanium, of course, with a threadless end. Uh, it is probably going to be uh, your most common option, I would hope, at this point in time in the history of the piercing industry. But it's my experience they work best. Now, that is going to be too long for what you want in the long run. It is important with any type of helix area, um, upper ear, flat, etc., to downsize the jewelry to a shorter post within six to eight weeks. Not only is it going to make your life easier and reduce the likelihood of movement and trauma and getting caught on things like hair, but 
Also, if you do not downsize, sometimes those piercings will start to kind of tip a little bit or move out of position. It is not uncommon for them to move up to an eighth of an inch or more. So always downsize. Uh, have your piercer do it for you. Usually they will do it for uh, the, just the cost of the jewelry and offer a discount. At least I do. Now, if you didn't get threadless and you got threaded, you do need to check the tightness of the ball or end. I would suggest checking it at least once a week. Pick a day of the week, like Tuesday. Tuesday's ball check day, and you check it every week. They can come unscrewed on their own sometimes. They usually fall off at the worst possible time, and they can be difficult to recover, as in as they roll down the shower drain. Um, and once they've been down there, you, 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 no, you don't put it back on. Um, when it's just always a good idea to check them, even after the piercing is healed. I, it's a good idea to check them on a regular basis. Now let's talk about living with a piercing. I already just talked about the ball thing, so I do suggest doing that throughout the period of time of having the piercing, is checking them on a regular basis to make sure they're on there tight if you have threaded jewelry. If you don't have threaded jewelry, eh, usually it's not an issue. Um, if you notice swelling or discomfort, uh, consult your piercer immediately. Cartilage piercings, uh, or piercings through this thicker cartilage, are prone to to even after years of having them and well-seasoned and everything, if you sleep on them wrong or they get banged or smacked right of swelling and being agitated for a few days, they still continue to react to trauma is what I'm getting at. So if you have a situation where it's swelling and it seems like it's going beyond or it's already at the length of the jewelry, see your piercer, see if it's a good idea maybe to put the longer one back in for a little while to, for this whole settle down and then go back to uh, the shorter post. I kind of made this a point, but the piercing does need to be isolated even after it heals. Um, it's one of those things where eventually over time it becomes less and less of an issue, but you always have to remember you have hard metal inside soft tissue. Uh, trauma to the piercing, banging, pulling, ripping, etc., can cause problems in even a healed piercing. So it's always best to isolate it and keep things away from it. Or your body will remind you to do that. With these, I do suggest leaving the jewelry in at all times, only taking out to replace. Um, it is not uncommon for a well-seasoned uh, piercing in this area to close pretty rapidly. Um, if you like it, leave something in it. Now let's talk a little bit about abandoning the piercing. If it's a situation where you're just done with it or for medical reasons or what have you or whatever, life changes. Um, if it's during the healing process and there are absolutely no signs of infection or problem, removing the jewelry is not an issue. Uh, your body will kind of close it up just like it would a normal puncture wound. Uh, just keep an eye on it just like you would if you were healing a cut or a puncture wound. If there's signs of infection, I suggest you either seek medical advice or you see your piercer. If there's any problem at all before you remove the jewelry. And the main reason for this is we do not want to create a situation where your body cannot expel the infection um, and that infection is trapped in there. And then you're off to uh, have some medical treatment, including lancing and draining and all kinds of fun things. Um, it's always best when in doubt, see your piercer. If the piercing is healed and there's no signs of infection or other problem, removing the jewelry will not be an issue. Um, if there is signs, once again, consult your piercer or a medical professional before removing. What will happen afterwards is your body will usually kind of compress the piercing uh, and try to seal it in the center and then kind of feel, fill up the tissue outward. It can appear heal or open for years after the piercing has been abandoned. Um, that is not uh, that is normal. Uh, don't worry about it. It is not still open. Um, it will have to, in most cases, be re-pierced. It's common to see kind of this waxy, uh, yellowish, um, oily substance that'll kind of collect in it, and if you squeeze it, it'll come out. That stuff is sebum. It is a uh, completely normal, natural, nothing to worry about. Um, has a very distinct odor too. It is what uh, your body uses to uh, lubricate your hair follicles. It also makes you waterproof. And in small crevices, it seems to collect. And a piercing that's been abandoned has some small crevices. Well, that's it. That's all I have to say about this piercing. Uh, do you have this piercing? Was it uh, helpful in your anxiety or any of that? Uh, tell us about your stories. 
uh, leave a comment. Also, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and we will see you in that next video.